Hi, and welcome to the When Harry Met Ani podcast. My name is Emily, and this is my podcast about knitting and crocheting. I live in Hershey, Pennsylvania with my husband and our two cats, Harry Potter and Onyx, hence the name of the podcast, When Harry Met Ani. Um, you can find me on Instagram as at When Harry Met Ani or on Ravelry as M Meister. And I just want to give a quick shout out to everyone who is returning for another episode. Thank you so much for continuing to watch and coming back. And for anybody who is joining me for the first time, welcome. I hope you like what you see. If you do, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you can get notifications when I post a new video. I am on a semi every other week schedule. Sometimes it's more like once a month, uh, once every other month, but I'm trying to stick to every other week or every few weeks. Um, the last video that I posted was the 20 questions challenge, so it was a little bit different than a regular podcast. So if you haven't watched that yet, make sure to check it out. Um, it's It was fun answering those questions and uh, you can learn a little bit more about me while watching me knit on a project. Um, so today I have four works in progress, no finished objects. I have a little bit of prime time, a little bit of acquisitions to share. And then I have some recommendations that I'd like to share when I move on to Emily's Random Corner. So before I get into the works in progress, I just thought I would mention that I am in a different space recording, um, just trying out a different setup. I am actually in our game room. Um, so usually Logan is down here doing stuff with uh, with computers and, and his own um, you know, his own hobbies, but um, I figured I'd give this setup a go and see how I like it. Um, all right, so first up is works in progress. So my first work in progress is living in this bag, which I'm sure is familiar to you by now if you watch the podcast. It is the Textures by Tammy Daniker Bags and Clutches bag. Um, it has this really nice drawstring. I actually put an enamel pin on it. It says, let's roll. I got that from Louise of the Adventures with Yarn podcast. And living in here is my Sponge Sugar Sunset Shawl, which is still not finished. Um, okay, so this was a test knit for Amanda Purser, who is Bertrand Lily Designs. Um, I'm a bad test knitter and have not finished the test knit yet. Um, however, um, it's almost done. I am actually on the bind off. <laughs> so uh, it has a Pico bind off and it is now up to 390 stitches. So when you have to cast on more stitches for the Pico bind off, um, it just, it takes a really long time. So I'll try to show you as best I can the status of the shawl. So it is a three color shawl. Um, this navy color is called Charcoal. Um, it is by Fibrarium in their Greenhouse Worsted. It's 100% superwash merino wool. Um, color B, this uh, kind of speckly color is Hummingbird Moon. It's over the moon sock and the colorway is spellbound. It's 80% wool, 20% nylon polymide blend. Um, there's this really big section here of that color. And then um, it there's another really large section once you have three over, you know, nearly 400 stitches on the needles. And I actually ran out of um, the color B in the last section where I was using it. So um, I'll have to tell Amanda that because, you know, it calls for three skeins of fingering weight and I used an entire skein and still needed to do about six rows of this color. And um, the green color is the Fiber Universe, which I'm still working on um, my Pico bind off. But this is the Fiber Universe Cosmic Sock in Little Green Men. It's 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon. Um, here's a big swatch of it. 
So it's going to be a crescent shawl. It looks a little triangular shape right now. It's kind of, it's like in that weird stage where it's just like a huge blob and very difficult to show. But yes, I only have this much more to bind off. And this is my Pico bind off so far. Again, this is all pre, pre blockage. So um, it is just a little bit of a mess, but I thought I would show it to you. Um, this is my progress keeper. So here's where I was last time. This is a progress keeper that was made by Chevis of Chevy Rell's stuff. She has a lot of these really neat um, progress keepers, stitch markers, some necklaces um, that she is solder, soldering. I think that's the word. Um, but she does really great work and I bought several of these. So they're really fun progress keepers to have um, on projects. So that's my Spun Sugar Sunset Shawl. Again, uh, not yet finished and it's huge right now, but hopefully within the next few weeks, I will have finished the bind off and will it will look more crescent shaped. Like, I think she aggressively blocked it. So, you know, just imagine this kind of more pulled out. I mean, it's definitely going to stretch. I love that. The green next to that, um, that, uh, multicolored yarn there. That was really fun. Um, I also have, a stitch marker here. I got this in Colorado. I don't know if you remember, I showed them off on my episode, but I have a bunch of like woodland creatures stitch markers, which are pretty neat. I got that. I got those at Fancy Tiger Crafts in Denver. So there you have it. That is my Spun Sugar Sunset Shawl by Amanda Purser. Next up, I have a work in progress that is living in this bag. It is my Alice in Wonderland bag by Tanny Casey. Um, I am making a pair of socks. They are the Suska socks by Andrea Mowry of Drea Renee Knits. Um, I am using uh, two Cascade yarns held double. So the first one is Cascade Yarns Alpaca Lace. And it's in color 1438. Um, it's 100% baby alpaca. It's a lace weight yarn. And then I'm holding it with this Cascade yarn, which is Cascade Heritage. Um, this is color 5263. It's 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. And I am making the Suska socks. So this is a relatively new pattern by Andrea Mowry. Um, it, she actually had it uh, announced in her newsletter that she was going to be doing a fall knit along challenge over Thanksgiving weekend. And I attempted to participate in it, but I horribly failed at even coming close to having a pair of socks. But I have almost one finished. So here it is. Um, really fun stitch on the front of the foot. It is a toe up pattern. She um, links to a video to show you how to do a Turkish cast on, which I really liked for the toe. Um, most of it though is pearl and I am just like really over pearling this much for a sock. I mean, socks are kind of difficult anyway to get into, especially one at a time and it's on Magic Loop, which I am not a huge, huge fan of Magic Loop. I find it goes slow for me. Um, but it is quicker than double points. I maybe should have thought about doing them two at a time, but I thought, you know, I'm not super familiar with doing um, two at a time toe up socks, except with one particular pattern. So I'll just do the one at a time because the, the instructions are written for one at a time magic loop. Um, the heel is a flegal heel. So it was the first time I did that. So that was a new thing that I learned. And then there's like this really cute Pico hem for uh, for the bind off. So I have probably like 15 more rows for this ankle. 
but um, really super soft socks. I am knitting the size two. They only come in two sizes. I probably could have gone away with knitting the size one, um, but I'm a tight knitter, so I thought I would do the size two. They're just gonna be really cozy socks. They're not gonna have a lot of negative ease, which is okay. Um, but that's really all I have to say about this. Um, you know, I cast them on on Thanksgiving and it is currently Sunday. So I would have wanted to have more progress on these socks, but like I was working on them pretty, um, pretty monogamously and still I really could only do one sock over the weekend. I was doing some other stuff, but I don't know how people, you know, have the time to just knit an entire pair of socks with fingering and lace weight yarn held double but a fun knit um again except I wish that I had maybe thought of a way to do this inside out so that I wasn't purling in the round constantly um I really just haven't enjoyed doing that but there you have it those are my Suska socks by Andrea Mowry I have another project living in this bag and it is the Flax by Tin Can Knits. I started a new one. Um, I am using Sugar Bush Bold. Um, this is 100% wool, extra fine, superwash merino. Um, I am just going to be digging into this first skein. I used the, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna be digging into the second skein. I used the first skein already. Um, and here is my flax. So this is, you know, you're probably very familiar with this pattern, um, but I have just one arm left to go. It has this really fun pearl, pearl panel down the arm. And I really like this yarn. I don't know if anyone has worked with this yarn before, but it just gives really good stitch definition, I feel. Um, I've really enjoyed how it's been working up. It's very soft for 100% wool. Um, I mean, it's merino, so it would be soft, but it doesn't seem like it's going to pill. It seems like a very sturdy yarn um, for a baby knit. So um, this I was knitting up for my boss and his wife, and they had their baby, like, mid October so the baby will already probably be two months by the time I get around to um, knitting the second sleeve and weaving in all the ends oh and closing the armholes so I watch a YouTube video I don't even remember which one it was but um, it was supposed to leave you know follow the instructions and leave no holes in the underarms that did not work. I have like some pretty serious holes here. So like I went and picked up all these stitches and did all these steps and then now I'm just gonna have to fix it anyway when I'm done. So I'm not really happy about that video. Um, and it was like, people liked the video. So I don't, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm gonna have to go back and fix that. But yeah, so this is The Flax by Tin Can Knits. I have one more knitting work in progress and I showed the yarn in my previous episode because it was a recent acquisition um, but I hadn't cast on the project yet and since then I have cast on the project and I'm nearly finished except I have to put heels in the socks so um, this project is living in this notions pouch slash bag that was made for me by uh, my friend Bethany of the Creaky Pines podcast. Um, it's supposed to be a notions pouch, but it can comfortably fit three wound mini skeins of yarn and socks that are in progress. Um, so the yarn that I am using is Asylum Fibers in um, the Madhouse mini base. The color is Shower Scene. So here's it wound up. Um, this skein is skein uh, the last of three skeins. Um, and this one is very saturated compared to the others. Um, so I'll show you the socks. So this was the first sock. 
These are the Georgia Socks by Tracy Miller. I am knitting them for my friend. Um, her birthday is coming up and she loves horror movies. So I thought um, this would be perfect homage to her love of watching horror movies. A cozy pair of socks knit in the color shower scene. So um, this is the right sock. It has this beautiful lace panel running down one side of the foot. Um, these were cuffed down socks. Pretty basic construction. They went super fast and this lace panel just kept them very interesting. So I did one sock in about two, three days and I did the other sock in the same amount of time. These are a quick knit. Um, here's the left sock and you can tell that this one is more saturated than this one, but I don't think she'll mind. You still get the point that they are red, white, and black. Um, so I still have to put in the heels. Um, so the pattern calls for an afterthought heel. And I have never put in afterthought heels before, but um, Tracy has really good instructions in the pattern. And she also links to a YouTube video um, that goes through very... Um, very thoroughly how to do an afterthought heel where you basically um, mark a stitch in the middle of the sock where you want the heel to be and then you cut into your knitting and you pick up stitches and you knit in a heel pretty much as if it were a toe but I had never I've never done it before um, I had mentioned on my 20 questions challenge video that I showed my um, my friends at knitting group at work the socks and I said yeah but they still need heels and they kind of looked at me like what do you mean and I said well I'm gonna add an afterthought heel and I'm gonna have to cut into my knitting and add it and they were they were just like flabbergasted and they were scared for me and they 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 said you're gonna cut into your knitting and I said yeah that's that's how you make an afterthought heel apparently so um, I just need to bite the bullet and put them in. I've been kind of avoiding it because I am scared. <laughs> but uh, um, I think it'll be okay. I mean, the video makes it very clear. And as long as I follow the instructions, I think it should be okay. So hope to have these finished soon. And um, maybe I will take a quick video or um, some pictures of them before I get them in the mail because they need to be sent off relatively soon when the rest of her gift arrives. But um, yes, these are the... Uh, Georgia Socks by Tracy Miller. That's actually all I have today for the knitting content, but I picked up a new craft, so I have a new work in progress that isn't knitting or crocheting, which is exciting. I started a cross stitch, go figure. <laughs> so I am cross stitching a pattern by Good Morning Maui. Um, it's this fun Dolly Parton pattern. Um, I found I found this designer and the patterns on Etsy. Um, so it's this cute little Dolly Parton caricature and um, the stitched quote, find out who you are and do it on purpose, Dolly Parton. So I'm um, stitching this for my friend who really likes Dolly Parton and went to Dolly World this year. So I'm gonna make this for her for Christmas. Um, so this is my progress so far. So I just have um, half of Dolly's hair and then her face and the little sections of white in there are where her cheeks will be and um, also her eyes. But it's been really fun. Um, it, I put it in this hoop. I don't think it's going to stay in here permanently. Um, I think I'll probably take it out and maybe put it in a frame. But um, this is fun. This is on 14 count. Um, and I honestly don't know that much more about cross stitch to tell you anything else. Um, the pattern told me what floss I needed to buy. So I went to Joanne Fabrics and just picked out the floss and, um, did like a, f watched a couple of videos on cross stitch basics before going out and picking up the supplies just to make sure I had everything. Um, so, you know, I got needles, um, I got the hoop. I got all the thread, um, I have a good pair of scissors. So it's been really fun. It's a lot different than knitting. And you know, if I, 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 I've always thought that 
that knitting and crocheting, it's a lot of time spent, well, knitting more so than crocheting, it's a lot of time spent and often you don't have a lot to show for it. Well, I think cross stitch is even more that way because I've worked on this probably for like four nights and this is as far as I got, like three quarters of a face and half of a head of hair. So it's gonna take a lot more time to finish this, hopefully by Christmas, but yeah, um, I just picked up a new craft and thought I would share it with you if you're interested. Um, so there's my Dolly Parton cross stitch, work in progress. Okay, moving on to prime time. So since my last podcast, I made a pretty big purchase um, for myself for the holidays. I bought an advent calendar, a yarn advent calendar. So I purchased an advent calendar from Felicity Yarn Studio. The dyer behind Felicity Yarn Studio is Zoe. And hi Zoe, if you're watching. Um, Zoe also has the Felicity Yarn Studio podcast. And she had talked in her episodes about putting together the advent calendar. So I went um, and checked out her shop on Etsy and um, I decided to buy one. And I also decided while I was there to purchase a birds of a feather shawl kit. So um, she, she dyed up two skeins of uh, fingering weight and one skein of mohair um, using avocado pits and it turned into this really nice rosy pink color. So I'll just show those first since I'm talking now about advent calendars. Um, or sorry, that I'm talking about the shawl kit. So this is um, the birds of a feather um, shawl kit. Um, this color is, it's called avocado pink. Um, it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And there's 463 yards in this skein and I have two of them. So this is the sock weight. And then this is the mohair. I've never worked with mohair before. Um, so I'm super excited and I am particularly excited to use this for birds of a, uh, birds of a feather shawl. Um, let's see, 460 yards in this skein. It's 72% mohair, 28% silk. Um, I forgot to mention for the Suska socks that I'm knitting, those call for fingering weight and mohair held double. Um, but when I went to my local yarn shop to pick out yarn for that project, because I didn't have a lace weight yarn, I didn't have any mohair that I wanted to, um, well, this actually is the only skein of mohair that I had at the time, um, but I wanted to use it for the birds of the feather shawl kit. But when I went to my local yarn shop to pick out um, yarn for the Suska socks. Uh, they had tons of fingering weight, but they actually, they didn't have mohair and they were limited with lace weight. So I found the 100% alpaca lace weight and thought that would be a good substitution for mohair. And I think it is, it's very soft. Um, I like the fabric. The colors blend less well than I thought they would um you know I thought that you know I feel like with mohair it's just like the slight halo effect and then it adds to whatever color you're kind of layering it on top of um so yeah that was just a digression about my Suska sock okay now on to the advent calendar so um Zoe's theme for um her advent calendar is um crystals and gemstones so it is December 1st, so I've already opened one, um, but they come in these cute brown bags. And the one for today is Roto Crocite. And um, Zoe actually posted pictures of um, today's yarn on her Instagram, so you can probably get a much better picture of it, but it's just this beautiful pink. Um, and she also very kindly sent me a couple extras, which I've already opened because I just could not contain myself. So um, this one came, and then she also sent this one. So, so far I have these very, they're just beautiful. 
you really need to consider buying this advent calendar next year <laughs> if um, you're looking for one. And she also sent the stitch marker, so a little gemstone. So this is the first advent calendar I've ever bought, so um, I am very excited to open a package a day until the 25th. Um, so that is my um, haul from Felicity Yarn Studio. Last but not least, Emily's Random Corner. Woohoo! So um, for this week, I just thought I would uh, share some of the books that I've been reading, the podcasts I've been watching, and some of the television, sh television shows I've been binging. So let's start first with podcasts. So I wanted to mention a few podcast that I think you should check out if you are interested in knitting, crocheting, uh, spinning, crafting podcasts. Um, the first is the SCR1TNO Knitting Project podcast with Sharon. Um, so Sharon does something really cool on her podcast where she has a rotation um, every six days where I, I, it's not exactly this order, but like day one, she does socks, day two, she does shawls, day three, she does scrappy projects. So she does that so she can uh, do, work on as many of her works in progress as she can and get as many off the needles. So um, I really like Sharon's podcast. I've been watching for a while now. Um, she is based in the UK, um, so I like listening to somebody with a different accent <laughs> so, uh, than my own, but um, yeah, so check out SCR1TNO Knitting Project Podcast. Um, the second podcast that I wanted to give a shout out is the Yarn Equals Joy podcast hosted by Rachel, and Rachel is, I think, based in Texas. She is a teacher. Um, she has uh, a lot of book recommendations, which I've, I enjoy as a reader. And um, yeah, she's just a really lovely podcaster and works on some beautiful projects, has a stash of beautiful yarn, and she does um, giveaways often. She's, she podcasts probably like every month or every other month. Um, but I enjoy watching Rachel's podcast as well. The last podcast I wanted to mention is a new to me podcast. It is the Cat Lady podcast. That's C-A-T-T, -T, Craft All the Things. And that is with Andrea. And um, Andrea has been podcasting for a while. She has, I think, I think she just did her, I want to say her 100th episode. Um, so she has quite a backlog of episodes if you want to go and binge uh, episodes from the beginning. Um, if not, she's participating in Vlogmas, so um, subscribe and catch some of her Vlogmas videos. So I hope you enjoy those recommendations. I'm always looking for new podcasters to watch and um, especially ones that don't necessarily have a huge following already or the ones that you just kind of hear about from other people um, because it's a really awesome community and a lot of people are doing a lot of different projects and a lot of people are at different points of their lives and I just enjoy um, finding out about new podcasts so I hope you do too. Okay so I wanted to share with you the books I've been reading and just give a little you know star ranking. Um, so the first book that I read recently or actually since my last podcast was uh, My Sister, the Serial Killer. Um, this is by Oyinkan Braithwaite. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm not sure I did. Um, so this is actually less of like a crime novel, more relates to family dynamics, um, but I enjoyed it. It was a very quick read. Um, not necessarily the, you know, most in-depth plot but um, I thought it was a good story and well told and I really enjoyed it it was told from a first person point of view um, so check this out if you just want a quick read um, I think it's made some of the lists on Goodreads for like best mystery or you know something like that but um, this was a good one I enjoyed it the next book I read was The Curious Incident of the Dog in, in the Nighttime 
I did not care for this book. I don't know what it was about this book. Um, I think it has something to do with the narr the narration style. So without giving anything away, um, the narrator has autism, and it's just told from a pers like a almost you know it's 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 written as if it were written by a child, um, and that. I, don't, I just don't know because that, that hasn't bothered me about other books. Like I really enjoyed Room, um, but I just, I didn't really care for this one. I think, I think maybe it was just the plot kind of was resolved three quarters of the way through. And then I just wasn't really interested in what was happening after that. Um, so can't really recommend this one. It's been around for a while now, but just wasn't my favorite. And then the book I'm reading now is, I'm reading the Amityville Horror. I picked this one up. Um, I picked this one up at our um, used bookstore and um, it was in the true crime section. And uh, it was released or it was written and released in like 1976 or 1977. So it's an old, oldie, it's a classic. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, it's written like a, you know, a piece of journalism, um, reporting on this family that moves into a house that is haunted or they, they discover it's haunted. Um, a murder took place there like a year before they moved in, but it's entertaining. I'll say, um, I think most of what was, um, most of what had been written about in the book and then subsequently, um, the book was made into a movie. I think most of those events have been debunked, um, that the family was kind of in it with the author of the book to make some money off of their experience in this house. Um, but it's still entertaining nonetheless. So I'm enjoying it. Again, it's a quick read. It's like 200 pages. So, um, I'm about halfway through it and, uh, yeah, I'll let you know how I like it. Um, when I finish it. But um, aside from reading, I've also been doing some television watching. So I would recommend you check out The Double Neck Store on Netflix. It is a true crime documentary series. I believe it was four episodes. It might have been five. But it is about the uh, man who was accused of being Ivan the Terrible, who was a... Um, a guard at a concentration camp during the Holocaust and um, at the time he was arrested he was living a fairly normal life um, in Ohio working as working at Ford of all places and uh, um, he was then extradited or I guess I don't know if that's the word I think extradited to Israel to stand trial for being Ivan the Terrible so that's just the background, but um, it was a fascinating documentary series, and I really enjoy. I really enjoyed it. If you're interested in true crime or interested in um, World War II history, um, and I thought it was very, very good and very well done. Um, that is it for this week. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope that you had a good Thanksgiving if you're in the United States and you celebrated Thanksgiving and, um, I will not be participating in vlogmas, but I hope to be back in a couple weeks with a new podcast episode. Um, so until then, I hope you are doing well and that you are enjoying a holiday prep and staying warm and getting a lot of crafting done. And until next time, um, take care and I'll see you then. Bye.